Warhammer finds itself on the precipice. People are feeling the pinch on their wallets as prices and profits for Games Workshop skyrocket. Meanwhile, 3D printers are cheaper and more readily available than ever before. Is now the time for the great 3D printing revolution? I'm undecided on this topic, so there's a lot of opinion coming ahead. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I look forward to reading them. The idea for this video came about because I'm in the midst of preparing an army for a Legions Imperialis tournament coming up next month. As I mentioned in my previous video on Legions Imperialis, my dream force is a rampaging set of red angels who will descend from the heavens on jump packs and in deep strike terminator suits of armor. All the while being carried by aircraft screeching across the sky because I just think it's so thematically appropriate for the 9th Legion. After feverishly theory crafting, I came up with a list and more than a few problems. To get enough Assault Marines and Terminators to add to my current force, I'd have to get four boxes of Legion's Imperialis Infantry. While this isn't the worst thing in the world, because I'm going to end up with extra Contemptor Dreadnoughts and tactical squads that I can make use of, it did sting a little bit to have to buy four separate boxes just to get a couple of squads. The problem comes from the fact that I want to make an Aerial Assault Detachment, meaning every single model that can't start in Deep Strike must start inside of a dedicated transport, that has to be an aircraft. That means a load of Thunderhawks to transport all of my infantry. All in all, I need four additional Thunderhawks, which doubles the cost of what I was gonna be spending on the force. But I was prepared to suck that up. Warhammer is an expensive hobby after all, and it's not the worst thing in the world. However, there is a second problem when it comes to the aircraft. Because of the removal of all Aeronautica Imperialis products, and the ravenous buying up of everything and anything that people can get their hands on, it's been really, really tricky for a while now to get your hands on any of the aircraft for Legion's Imperialis. It was at this point that I was approached by a friend who's into 3D printing. He said that he could make me some T-Hawks and Mark II style marine style models for a fraction of the cost. Because of the problems previously mentioned, this was a bit of a no-brainer, and it led me to thinking, should we be doing more 3D printing in the Warhammer hobby? Even 20 years ago, the idea of a 3D model that you could take from computer to being able to play with, look at, and throw at your mate's annoying Tau gunline army was the stuff of science fiction. But the science fiction of 20 years ago is today's science fact. A printer like the Anycubic Photon Mono M5 boasts an average printing speed of up to 105 millimeters per hour, meaning you could print out something human or space marine sized in less than 20 minutes. And Legion's Imperialis models in about the time it takes to brew a cuppa. Granted, this is the fastest printer I could find reference to, and it needs special speed resin to get these kind of results. Even with conservative estimates, this still means that in a couple of hours, you're going from an STL file to something printed that you can start playing with. And what's more, the technology is only going to improve with inbuilt wash stations and faster printing speeds. In order to talk about why this is so interesting when it comes to Games Workshop, we need to talk about what the world of Warhammer 40,000 actually is. The universe of Warhammer 40k is a setting, not a story. This might be a controversial statement. And there are definitely stories that exist within 40k. But the way that the game was initially designed at its inception leads me to this conclusion. It's designed to be a place where you can play your own games and come up with your own stories and not a place where you follow something somebody else has written. And while over recent years the big wigs at GW have made it clear that they want to lean into the copyrightable and reproducible parts of their setting, there is absolutely nothing they can do to stop you from designing and making your own things inside of their universe. As soon as you have a setting rather than a story, you put yourself in a precarious position. You now provide the diving board for people to jump in rather than owning the whole swimming pool. But what is that other pillar of this great hobby of ours? Craft and creativity. 
If your favourite character doesn't yet exist as a miniature, there's absolutely nothing to stop you from converting and kitbashing existing games workshop models to get just the right look. Better yet, once you've taken the plunge into the hobby, there's nothing stopping you from getting your own models from other sources and using them to represent those characters on the tabletop. And this is where I think 3D printing represents the future of Warhammer 40,000 and miniature games as a whole. Long-time viewers of the channel will be well aware of my preference for narrative or casual gameplay. So of course, it stands to reason that I revel in the freedom of expression and creativity that is granted by these new emerging technologies. So where does this leave Games Workshop? In the short term, we've already seen them scramble to protect their intellectual property, from locking their tournaments to Games Workshop-only models, to targeting those people creating 3D models where certain copyrightable elements are enough for Games Workshop to take them down. However, with the broadness of scope of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, there's simply no credible way that Games Workshop can target every proxy model or alternative sculpt for their miniatures. Prominent campaigns like Mini Wargaming's Ravaged Star shows that there is a market for proxy models that can be used in Games Workshop games. For those unaware, this was a campaign that was run by the YouTube channel Mini Wargaming in order to drum up funds for their own tabletop wargame. Ostensibly, to be able to play that game by itself, it just so happens that a lot of the factions in there share a lot of similarities with similar factions in Warhammer 40,000, making them excellent proxy models. While small when compared to a multi-billion pound enterprise like Games Workshop, this definitely did create ripples. And it's only one angle of attack that Games Workshop is facing. The real threat comes from the affordability of individuals purchasing and using 3D printers. As I've mentioned epic scale Thunderhawks previously, let's talk about a model that some people might want to own if they've got £575 sitting around, a full-sized resin Thunderhawk from Forgeworld. Instead of buying a single kit made from resin, you could instead purchase a 3D printer, enough STLs to see you for the foreseeable future, and enough resin to keep you printing for weeks and months to come. And at the end of it all, you have a 3D printer you can keep using with the addition of more resin and time, as opposed to one big chunky plane. Now I'm aware this isn't an apples to apples comparison with slicing the time taken for finding STLs and the hazards and pitfalls of printing itself, but you have to admit that the offering from Games Workshop is looking more and more flimsy by the day as 3D printing becomes more and more affordable. I understand that there are business costs associated with running Games Workshop, and in principle, the idea of increasing the prices of their models in order to keep up with spiralling operations costs does make sense. Their creative people make models and games that people love to look at, play, and engage with. They even pay bonuses to their staff in bumper profit years, though there's enough stories of redundancies and low paid jobs that it's hard to exactly see them as a very good employer. It also isn't enough to shake the feeling that spending 35 to 40 pounds on a squad of five to 10 plastic models that cost pennies to produce is starting to get to the point of absurdity. When this sort of thing starts to happen and this relentless profiteering takes place, people will look for alternatives. In the absence of any credible competition, while there is some great work being done by other miniatures companies, 3D printing offers that outlet, while also allowing amazingly creative folks to put their own spin on sci-fi and fantasy miniatures, whether they're proxies for 40K or not. Games Workshop's fortunes as a company may wax and wane, but Warhammer has somewhat transcended the little miniatures. In many ways, gamers have already claimed portions of this fictional universe as their own, and there's absolutely nothing that Games Workshop can do to stop it, or to extract more money out of them. In these areas of the galaxy, people can use whatever minis they want, whatever rules they want, and can have as much fun as they want telling the tabletop stories that they want to see. In my recent Necromunda campaign, gangs of rat ogres, psychopathic goblins, and monkey men all vied for supremacy in the underhive of Necromunda. 
and 3D printed miniatures help to provide some of the funniest characters throughout that whole campaign. Regardless of the world you're playing in, I think the ability to express yourself through more choice and diversity, including 3D printed miniatures, is only a good thing. But that's just my opinion. Where do you stand on 3D printing and Games Workshop? Do you own any 3D printed armies or models that you're really proud of? Let me know in the comments down below. And in the meantime, my name has been Ollie. This has been my hobby. And I'll see you next time.